don't blame Paul for all the false teachers out there. Paul had outstanding sound doctrine. I learned more from Paul than any other apostle because he's written a lot more. Any other writings because he's written a lot more. And he explains things and with Romans and Corinthians and all that. There's a lot of good doctrine in there. And he does not teach that we're saved by faith alone. Nowhere does he say that. Look at the word faith alone in the Bible. You're only going to find it one place. Let me show you. Faith alone. You type it into like Esword. And it's James. Uh, oh, that's interesting. James only. I mean, faith only. I mean, not faith only. If you look at faith alone... James 2.17 says, even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone, okay? And then it, faith only, you look at that, and it says, even so, faith, if it has not work, is dead being alone. Okay, so where does Paul, if I'm looking in the New Testament for faith only, where is Paul saying faith only? Look what, look what Paul says. Um, in all the verses they talk about faith faith and works he's talking about usually he's talking about works of the law uh, let's see if you think you're justified by works alone without faith then you're you're in error but um, but there is there is works along with fakes faith um, okay Um, it's just that people are unlearned and they're unstable and learn as Peter explained and people twist around what he said he said more than any of the other apostles um, Romans 3:28 says we therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law see it's the deeds of the law the deeds of the law are do this don't do that do that the reason why we can't be justified by the deeds of the law is because all of us are transgressors. You can't. He's talking about people that are trying to go the other way without Christ, thinking that they can be saved without Jesus. That's what he's talking about. And a man cannot be saved by his own works. A man has to be saved by Jesus because we have failed to fulfill the law. All men have transgressed. So that's why it's misunderstood, because people take it out of context. You know, they talk about the redemption of Jesus Christ right here in verse uh, Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. He's just telling us that it's through Jesus Christ that we're saved, not by works that we do to earn our salvation. That is what he's talking about. He's not talking, he's not denying that we're justified by works that come from faith. Because he gives example. It says, What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to flesh have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, we have whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God and was counted unto him for righteousness. Well, tell me, did Abraham just do nothing but twiddle his thumbs because of his faith? Absolutely not. He, uh, he, um, didn't earn his salvation. He didn't say, God, what do you need me to do? What do I have to do to pay for my salvation? He didn't do that. But he obeyed God. He listened to God because he believed God. God's the one that determines, you know, everything. He's the beginning and ending of everything. So um, it's just that um, people don't understand um, what Paul's writing here. Because... Um, uh, God forgives sinners, people that have sinned, and and so nobody, everybody is, has sinned, so nobody is can by the law be justified. And uh, look at this Romans four twelve says, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham. Romans four twelve who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. See, there, there's a work there. He, he does something as a result. He walks in the steps. He doesn't just believe. He actually walks in the steps. He follows what he believes. 
and it shows how he was t uh, was um, tested in the Old Testament and I think in the New Testament and many places it's not as is you know but um, look at this Romans 420 says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong of faith giving glory to God how can he be strong in faith and not being weak and safe, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at this, and being, Romans 4.21, and being fully persuaded that what we had promised, he was also able, able also to perform. So he, he was promised things, and then he fulfilled what he was promised. And it shows that in the Old Testament, and, and he's also talking about Abraham. He's not denying. He's not correcting the Old Testament record. And so he gives a, a, a examples of faith all through the Bible. In Corinthians, and if you believe he wrote Hebrews, in Hebrews he gives a hall of faith. Tell me, you know, just I challenge you to find one person that, that Paul writes about that doesn't do something as a re result. You know, it says, like Hebrews 11.22, By faith Joseph, when he died, may mention the departing of the children of Israel, and gave commandment concerning his bone. By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parish, because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. See, they, these people, that their parents, had faith, and they, they did not obey the king's commandment, because they... They saw he was the right, he was the ch chosen child. By faith, Moses, when he came to, year, uh, to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Uh, you know, um, that's Hebrews. Whoever wrote Hebrews, that was Paul, I believe. Most people believe it was Paul. And um, how could he be such a poor teacher when he gives such sound art? He All through the Bible. I can just give you tons of examples of where he's showing us a sound doctrine that we all these people that are teaching uh, trust in the finished work of the cross of, of Christ once saved always saved all those people are going against the very words of Paul Paul will probably uh, witness against those people because uh, he said know ye not that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of earth kingdom of heaven I mean right and so if he's saying that if you're righteous you do righteous things if you're unrighteous, you do unrighteous things. That's your work. So people that are unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And he preaches this over and over. He says, according to godliness. Look at the word godliness that Paul writes. I mean, he, he writes it so many times in the scripture. About godliness. Um, Refuse profane old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godly, for bodily exercise profit liver, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is, and that which is to come. See, he's saying that if you're godly, you have a promise of a future in heaven. Faithful saying, worry of all accreditation. And he says, well, look at this. There, we, therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is Savior of all men, especially those that believe. It's Everything he's talking about is salvation through uh, being cleansed from Jesus, cleansed from your sin, and changing, and taking hold of that faith, and maintaining that faith. In, in uh, I think it's Colossians, there's a verse that says, if you, know, uh, if you continue in the faith, you know, you continue in the faith, you're tempted, um, when we are tempted, that's if we, you know, when we suffer from temptations or are persecuted, that that is great. We should celebrate that because that is for our justification. Uh, all over and over and over, and yet millions of millions of Christians and millions and millions of teachers are false teachers in the pulpits who are insisting that nothing we do has anything to do with our salvation at all, and that is just uh, that's the biggest lie of all. Um, th there's there's plenty of evidence in there of Paul's writing, and he wrote plenty, right? So we should know where he stands on this, and he consistently teaches that once saved, always saved is false. He, he teaches take heed lest ye fall. He teaches that that we need our faith is 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 uh, our faith is not without works. 
you know, look at this. Um, oh, Galatians 3, 8, it says, In the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Well, why was why did the promise come from from Abraham? Well, if you, he's saying that what Abraham did is how the his works is how the promise came. He just didn't earn his salvation. If you think you can earn your salvation by your work, you got a lot of work to do. You got a lot of work to do, and uh, that's not how it is. We're 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 saved by faith, but the faith is not without works. And the faith is what we do in faith. Our our acts are based on faith. The true faith is towards our justification, justified by works, not just faith only. He just didn't speak it that way because he was constantly, um, you know, um, bombarded by people that were telling him that he needed to um, circumcise the Gentiles and teach them to observe all the Sabbath and all these other. Uh, days, you know, and, and all these things in order to be saved, observe the law in order to be saved. And so he was telling them, I never taught you those things in Galatians, and that you're saved by walking in the Spirit, not after the flesh. That means if you walk after the Spirit, you do good works. If you walk after the flesh, you do bad works. It's all about your works. But it's based on God. It's not based on us. It's God working in us. We can't claim anything. That's why Paul said such strange things in the Bible. Because most people think that if you do good works, it's of yourself. But he is—he doesn't claim that. He claims that he's not uh, not all that. He doesn't boast about, even though he did does boast in, in Corinthians a little bit about some of the things he did because other apostles are coming along saying they're greater than he was. And he was trying to show them that he was the real deal. He was a real apostle. And he had suffered for the, the word. And so he, he if you suffer, he, he's an example. Paul's an example of faith. <laughs> the things he did. You'd have to be completely blind not to understand this. But that's the problem. Is there's just thousands and thousands of false teachers that are damned because they teach people that it's okay to sin. They don't even teach them that if you sin and you feel bad about to come to Jesus... If people would just do that, if they just told them that if you sin and you feel bad, you come to Jesus and you'll be forgiven, they would um, they would still be saved because Jesus would teach them. He would cleanse them and teach them the right way. But because they continue to sin and they don't turn to Jesus and they just hide their sin and they think that they're they're saved and they're not, they on judgment day they're going to be. Uh, very surprised because they've been taught that when they go up to see God, that um, God's only going to see Jesus in them because Jesus did their works for them. And that's a lie. And the reason why is because if we don't do good works, then the name of God is going to be cursed because as, as, because we carry the name of Jesus in our churches, in our names and stuff like that. And because of that, God's name cannot be blasphemed. Okay? So we carry the name of God and we're cursed if we continue to sin although we can and, and we don't do um, righteous acts be, if we don't do that then uh, we're not of God because God is holy right so God is holy and he does good works and he does good works through us and teaches us the way of salvation this is the simplest thing to understand but people's hearts are so hardened nowadays I don't know why but it's just the end times I guess there's very few people that believe the truth well, i got to go. It's almost 15 minutes here. So think about what I've got to say. And if there's anything that you have in your heart, come to Jesus about it and ask him. He will be happy to show you the truth and forgive you if you're um, walking in sin and show you the right way. Just read the scripture. There's hard things written in there, but you just have to continue to abide in those those things and continue to study them and not listen to them. If you're going to teachers that's telling you once saved, always saved, leave immediately. And don't preach that junk. Please, don't do that. You're, you're going to be cursed if you continue to do that. You don't want to do that because that's against God. You're coming against God. You're putting, it's called a stumbling block. It's Balaam put a stumbling block, block in the people of Israel. That is a stumbling block when you teach uh, that permission to sin. That's this is total stumbling block. Okay. Catch you catch you later. Hope you hear this.